session uh, 8a of the program making your front of work we're going to talk about efficacy in uh, the widest terms possible um let's recap customer journey mapping and uh, setting up analytics conversion rate optimization we talked about content marketing every stage of the journey and now uh, we're going to the part of the journey where you don't need the content anymore that you already created uh, legal gdpr especially for the european uh, sales site and if you set the gdpr at this moment as your standard you will be all right google analytics seo we talked about app marketing also a part of that will uh, come to uh, back today the landing page optimization of course very important we talked about reviews in that sense uh, today we also going to talk about reviews but then in the sense of advocacy um, trials if you need them uh, on the phone to get your conversions call fast preferably in the same session that they uh, started their first login social media uh, of course very important especially for the first touch uh, outreach or engagement or reach um, just some sizes that uh, uh, from the uh, numbers of 2020 facebook of course youtube uh, whatsapp facebook messenger etc uh, linkedin Core and Twitter are uh, well known, uh, and YouTube also uh, well known uh, B2B channels. Um, what I've known is LinkedIn is very serious concerning engagement and stuff like that. So be there. Lead nurturing. An 18 month cycle, that's a long cycle, uh, but it took 18 months because uh, if you sell to large corporation enterprises or uh, governments, you have at least a 12 month uh, budgeting cycle ahead of you. So uh, sometimes you de need to, to consider that. So I took eight mo 18 months, but mostly it will be uh, far more shorter cycles between uh, two to six months for SaaS and shorter for uh, e-commerce and the B2C apps. We talked about uh, onboarding, conversions, um, Optimize each step, of course, of your uh, funnel process. And concerning uh, SaaS, uh, create a lot of uh, um, supportive content um, because you will need it both on the onboarding process, but of course, also in the sequential step, uh, creating customer success. Um, and while we talk about marketing automation a lot in the sense of acquisition, um, you will need it as much uh, once they're in or behind the trial. Um, customer success, provide all the content users need to help themselves. Um, and of course, uh, find, out, find, find out what they want to reach with your product. Sometimes it's very obvious and sometimes is less or more user dependent the role of the user in the decision making unit um, we talked about uh, not about churn uh, recent analysis but it was the most important slide i could find out of that uh, uh, session um, a model from lincoln murphy from 16 ventures uh, uh, one of the best SaaS blocks i know uh what kind of churn uh you have like uh, unavoidable churn like just uh, it's a bad fit as a client or they out, out, have outgrown your product they need more complex functionality uh, or they're out of business or a takeover or something uh, uh, like corona just happened of course uh, there's less to consider um but expect a churn uh, because of a uh, low usage says uh, low usage of your app or product you want to prevent that and be proactively about it um, retention was the slide um, 
And of course, unexpected is that you don't see, saw it coming uh, while well, had good usage points uh, or they were not in your risk cycle. And you think, hey, what happened over there? You have to find out what's uh, happening. Um, you want to check for early warning indicators, external uh, reviews. Of course, don't look at the average, but look at in uh, in cohorts like from a new release or uh, last month or uh, whatever your cycle is, but not just on the average. Um, and ask them, uh, especially after the cancellation, because that will be your most truthfully answers. If you try to win them in at the last moment, sometimes it's a win, but really have a low expectation and you will need to convince them to stay. So today we're going to talk about advocacy. We're going to talk about reviews, testimonials, affiliate programs, um, points and rewards, uh, exclusive influencer marketing, uh, and ambassador program. Advocacy, a customer advocacy program is a marketing initiative that is designed to turn customers into spokespeople for your brand. Formalized advocacy program does this by offering customer incentives by doing this, you can encourage your customers to phone and talk about your company. In short, uh, stimulate, facilitate, and measure word of mouth, marketing, word of mouth, uh, word of cautions. Uh, of course, you have to have a great product or great, a good product that your customers met their um, goals thanks to your product uh, before you can ask them. Uh, please tell somebody else something positive about my organization or product. Um, this are, is a sheet from uh, on the, uh, an article from Rocket Data on Medium, and on the left axis, or the, sorry, the vertical axis, we see here uh, the conversion rate of the website of the merchant, and on the right axis, the uh, average rating on the five-star scale. The different free line SMB is small, medium-sized business. Uh, Dark blue or black is enterprise, uh, and the purple is uh, global companies, global working. Uh, and the difference is like uh, you can have a big enterprise company, but only based in New York or in the United States, or global could be like a uh, restaurant chain or something. Um, and then you see when the, there's a, a, a big change of uh, conversion rates. That's with uh, on an average of 4.4. Uh, the re conversion rates really go up, except for the SMBs. Um, so it's interesting to consider, hey, uh, what's the impact of this? Of course, uh, if you have a free of 3.5, you're also uh, quite lower than uh, the 4% conversion rate. Say you're on 3.1, 3.2%. Um, so it matters a lot. Um, what's more? shaky the smb line the average uh, from the same source of article um, the average review volume by industry measured against the average uh, maximum growth uh, the, the average what you need to reach maximum growth um, so say the best in class um, on the vertical axis the average uh, amount so the volume of reviews, how many reviews were there? And uh, on the so horizontal axis, several verticals. Blue line is the average, uh, red is the maximum. Um, so it's interesting to see, hey, how many reviews do I need uh, to get uh, a better better results from a re reviews. Like if you're having an app and you're building for uh, your first five, six reviews, you really need a lot of reviews. And same for other products, but uh, especially for apps. What are the impact of reviews on conversion rates? Um, star rating from a 3.7 to a 4.4 can increase in the enterprise conversion rates by 80% and by glo for global brands uh, up to 120%. Um, and that's also the point where the growth, uh, uh, the slope of the graph is the steepest, about 25%. Um, also, this article, the, the data, rocket data set, 
uh, that replying on reviews uh, had a really high impact on the conversion rates on your own website or on your uh, on the App Store product page. Um, they had nearly the same conversion rate when they uh, replied in about eight, one to ten um, reviews, bad reviews, good reviews, whatever. Just uh, commenting and replying on it, um, but uh, do you uh, scale it up to uh, say one in three uh, reviews, and you get a higher, 80% higher conversion rate. So uh, engaging in commenting and reviews is really uh, rewarding. Who do you ask for reviews? Well, reviews have a high impact on your key metrics like we uh, saw in the slides before, so you want to prevent bad reviews. Uh, kind of pre-qualification process is uh, essential for the reason. And of course you can set uh, several ways uh, to uh, judge if, uh, to, uh, to analyze if somebody uh, would give you a high uh, review. You have of course behavior based um, triggers like a frequent or recurring bias. They uh, probably are more, um, willing to give you a good review, intensive or engaged users, um, uh, engaged users, of course, uh, members of community, while well, maybe a big client, but a big fan and a big uh, uh, ambassador for your brand, uh, you can ask them, of course, if they want to uh, review or they're a moderator on your forum, kind of that kind of stuff. Um, social media behavior, indication uh, if they uh, share you, uh, mention you, like you, etc., uh, etc. et, cetera, et cetera. So um, that can be really interesting. And if you have a brand that, that uh, causes more momentum, uh, more uh, shares, like maybe it's also interesting on the backside connect so to connect social media accounts so you can see which of your uh, fans and clients are sharing and liking, etc. Of course, you also can ask them, um, if you have a, 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 a net promoter score uh, process in place, uh, you ask, of course, only the promoters, say uh, nine and 10 ratings. Uh, but often you see, uh, especially with apps, but also on websites, they um, give you a pop up. And if you have uh, give them a star four or five, um, they will ask you, well, uh, would you like to go to the App Store to give us a, a review there? So uh, that's also another way to do it. Most important to remember, of course, is that you don't want to send everybody to the review, especially if your product is needs a lot of usage um, before getting value out of your product, or you're not sure what they're going to do. Well, what kind of uh, behaviors do you want to see? Of course, buying a product, upgrading a product, or extend the uh, subscription. Other engagements are visit the website, viewing a page of content, publish or comment on clicking on links, downloads, data enrichment profile, share a link, write a review. Uh, um, the writing and review, of course, uh, uh, when you can track them by name, uh, that can be a tedious task to to, to find out who they are. Um, but it's something to uh, to uh, to look into, especially if the volumes are not to say um, tens, tens of a reviews per day. Uh, so you can manage it manually, you really should do it. Um, of course, you can place a link on a website on their own blog. Or, or in a social media post, or uh, etc., um, or in a comment somewhere, um, forward an email, of course. If you uh, send them a newsletter uh, and they forward it to friends, and you can measure, hey, how, how much traffic comes from that forwarded link, uh, that's also interesting. Where do you send them to? Um, of course, you can uh, send them to your own website and ask them for a testimonial. We're going to talk about that in a second. But um, for high volume reviews, uh, you really send them to trusted third party websites. Um, of course, you have several networks. I've divided them in uh, say uh, four categories. 
uh, SaaS, say 99% B2B products, um, non SaaS, but B2B, uh, it's more like a more of kind of a directory old fashioned style uh, yellow pages, but with uh, intensive review option and also uh, checked uh, uh, is there for real. Um, of course, you have uh, large B2C platforms and um, whatever platform you choose over there, um, choose one that is um, accepted by Google. Why do I say that? Because you can, if they're say certified or accepted by Google, uh, you can integrate their reviews. So your average score in all kinds of ad products. And if you have a high review, say four or higher, um, then um, you really can increase uh, the CTR, CTR on uh, several advertising products of Google and YouTube uh, or your uh, average app inst uh, cost per install. So it's really interesting, um, not alone to have it on a third party website, but especially when you choose a platform and they have small differences um, to check if they're accepted by Facebook. These ones here are all accepted by Facebook or uh, by Google. Uh, of course, Google My Business, um, we talked about that also a little bit uh, on the SEO uh, slide deck. Um, it's free and you should absolutely be on, um, on, on, on uh, Google My Business. They have all kinds of features. It's not just a directory to show you up and on Google Maps. If their search results are relevant for your uh, geo, uh, but all, all kinds of other uh, interesting um, functionality. Of course, uh, for the apps, send it to the Play Store and App Store. Uh, split up your marketing between uh, uh, logically between Apple users and uh, uh, Android users. And that's about it. A lot of uh, from the B2B products, um, verify usage through uh, uh, several steps. An important step is a, a LinkedIn uh, login uh, or a business and or a business email. Um, so, points and rewards. We're talking about points and reward in this case uh, from a advocacy perspective. Of course, we also already talked about it in uh, uh, with retention in the sense of gamification. Uh, we're not gonna gonna talk about gamification here, uh, but. It's like a good marriage of men and wife. They're closely related to each other. Um, mostly used for B2C programs, uh, close knit to gamification, like I just said. Um, but what are the benefits? You can build it automatically. Um, what do I mean with that? You can sign up users automatically for your um, for your uh, say your loyalty program. Um, and why would you do that? Is to create a lock-in effect. Like uh, the first time a customer does something, uh, just a, maybe a nice uh, um, experience. But what what it matters that they see, like, hey, they, I do. If I do little things like buy something or uh, open an email or a newsletter, I get points for it. And well, maybe the first few months it doesn't. Um, mean anything but after a while if they're a recurring client uh, they should find out that uh, you give them value we're going to talk about the value in a while in, uh, in the next slide or a few slides ahead um, but if you do it automatically on a certain moment you can uh, give a lot of value from your perspective so not their perspective to say sharing or forwarding or bringing in clients so if you have a client who buys, uh, buys uh, say, every month, uh, say, for 50 euros or something from you, um, and you give them every time, say, five points, um, so after five months, they have 25 points. Well, 
that's five purchases, uh, 25 pound points for five purchases. But then you show them, well, you can double the um, points say from 25 to 50 if you share your last purchase on uh, your Facebook. So that's why uh, you want to um, automatically sign them up for it and stimulate engagement with the point system. So the point system is not used, not intended to, uh, to give them a, a, a discount. Uh, it has to make certain actions on your platform more valuable. Um, of course, you also want to have them more loyal, but what's there in your uh, loyalty trap, uh, hopefully they uh, feel it as a positive thing. Um, how to use for advocacy, extra points for bringing in new clients, sharing referral links, social media, etc. cetera. Um, on the right side, uh, a table, a column um, for B2B. Um, uh, you have a situation where you have uh, three kinds of different roles, say a purchaser uh, or somebody who uh, is a user or in the middle, middle somebody who uh, represents both uh, roles, who is both purchaser and user. And uh, you can think of several uh, re reward system or um, um, gifting system um, to create value for them in the B2B perspective. Uh, personally, I'm not a big fan of uh, discounts and uh, coupons and stuff like that, uh, maybe for the first uh, uh, acquisition, but you, uh, you really want uh, to create value instead of giving discount because uh, I've seen enough pricing tests that uh, in the long run, that's always better. And uh, it's you create a bigger, uh, uh, bigger competitive advantage if you create more value. It's difficult to imitate. Well, discounting is not. Um, testimonials. Um, we know uh, that they increase the conversion rate on your website a lot. Uh, testimonials, use cases, more uh, extended. Um, um, usage of client reviews on your own website. So they can be, uh, uh, they are less trust, trustworthy in general uh, than those on third party websites. Um, but how you can use them both on position, positioning on your website uh, or in your app, um, or at the moment of uh, that you want to sell, upgrade them, upsell them to a paid product, uh, can, differ a lot. Here's an example uh, from the website, official website optimizer. And um, well, what you can see, they uh, picked two specific. Uh, if you read the case, uh, which is on the link, they choose two uh, specific reviews. And secondly, uh, they changed the position, what we see here, um, more included in the main offer, while the other are more separated, not only uh, because of there's a call to action for uh, uh, the free ebook copy, but also due to uh, their framing, like there's a big, it's in a different frame. So from the perspective of the user, it's something different. Um, but I also used uh, the quote from a testimonial as the headline. This is also very interesting from this uh, from this test case. So um, I urge you to. Uh, Take a look at the test case, it was, it was really, really interesting. Um, and of course, uh, a lot of more downloads, in this case, uh, almost 65%. Ambassador program. Well, there are many names for an ambassador program. Um, sometimes paid affiliate programs uh, are meant with it, uh, programs that create value in exclusive and monetary value items. Uh, more in the sense of a loyalty program. We just discussed uh, uh, a few slides ago in the points, rewards. Um, you can use ambassadors as a brand extension 
and is mostly part of your distribution strategy. That's more strategic appliance. Um, what would you think about uh, ambassadors say uh, anything what looks like from a digital version like uh, the Tupperware party ladies? Um, can also uh, say resellers in the Tupperware case, but it's more like um, uh, you have this yoga pants, uh, uh, yoga sports suit uh, brand that has local stores, but has collected uh, ambassadors around those local stores. And those ambassadors uh, give uh, free uh, yoga lessons and stuff like that in the in the in the store. So um, it's an alternative way how you can use it. Um, community engagement, volunteers, of course. Uh, like I'm an ambassador, and I mean more uh, famous people who are an ambassador of uh, a good cause. Uh, and of course, community members, um, and I mean digital, like uh, if you first in the forum, newbie, uh, well, expert or moderator status is uh, um, can also be an ambassador. Um, so how do you can use this for advocacy? Well, any activity of one of the above programs that stimulates uh, loyalty of advocacy should be considered. Uh, of course, when your ROI business uh, uh, case is positive, uh, I mean, uh, building a com really a digital community like in a forum where users can engage with each other and you have an exclusive pro uh, content program um, uh, it's quite an investment uh, in the sense of time uh, and building and the risk of building it. I mean, if they don't engage with you, if you don't have enough users, then um, so what kind of exclusive can you think of? And this exclu exclusives can you uh, uh, anywhere where you also would offer a discount or a coupon? So think about if a, if a VIP area, special trading, or access to beta launches and stuff like that, or uh, access to events, product launches, uh, exclusive webinars, or uh, if you have a big SaaS brand and uh, uh, you you can get the CEO of uh, Salesforce uh, for a uh, fireside chat, uh, and you want to show that first or live, with the option for live live questions uh, to your uh, uh, clients, that will be something really valuable. Training, extra one on one training. Um, or uh, if you have a certification program, like uh, uh, you can offer them a free certification or something, or uh, uh, an extra layer on top of the certification. And of course, in commerce, uh, you can offer free shipping, uh, faster delivery, uh, like think about Amazon Prime with all its features. Uh, extra features is if that's more, um, for example, for an app, would be that we really be something. Um, Always discount. Um, if that's uh, your pricing model does that uh, does allow that, uh, that can be interesting. Like you get all the always a five or ten percent discount if you're a, a member of our exclusive program. Free services, of course, an extra month in the case of SaaS. Um, so pay eleven, get twelve, something like that. Um, influencer marketing. Um, but this involves a brand collaborating with online influencing to market one of its products or services, of course. Um, some influencer marketing collaborations are less tangible. So it's more, uh, you make specific deals for a longer term cooperation or uh, a deal specific made for your brand, for your specific circumstances and how you want to promote or put, uh, put a user influencer in your campaign. Um, because there are also uh, on the link below overview of networks I mean, on the website are, I think, I believe uh, 20 or 30, 20 to 30 different uh, influencer marketing uh, platforms. 
uh, networks. Um, I don't have a lot of experience with influence marketing. The experience that I do have, um, it felt a lot like um, affiliate marketing alone. We get to that later, uh, but uh, then paying for the in, in that sense, then paying for the reach and uh, more in the place. For, so for the branding of the influence, the name of the influence, and the engagement. While with affiliate marketing, you uh, you have more performance based other performance based metrics more closer to your wallet less risky um what kind of payment models um, payment models are there uh, a price per thousand uh followers so um uh, watch that organic reach um uh, per platform Facebook has different prices than Instagram, Snapchat, etc. Uh, uh, price per engagement, per uh, thousand uh, shares or likes or comments, and of course per reach. Uh, but again, like the upper first followers, watch organic reach, and you can make all kinds of deals, product placements, uh, unboxing, uh, whatever. Um, In B2B, you see more in uh, like uh, uh, in reviews and stuff like that. So, um, but can be interesting. Blogger outreach. Um, affiliate marketing. The next slide will uh, explain to you uh, why. It's here in the advocacy sli uh, uh, slide. Affiliate marketing is our advertising programs that are based on performance. Most used methods are for rewarding are cost per click, cost per action, and uh, it can be anything what you can measure or what the network can measure, uh, cost per lead, a cost per sale. A sale is, an, uh, is of course, uh, a paid account. Sometimes trial in case of B2B, uh, but certainly in straightforward B2C, uh, um, you have also have a window where you have to uh, approve of the conversion uh, uh, an affiliate says or is measured through his channel, which is done. And in, the, in the Europe, in most countries, you have a 40 day uh, return um, period. Um, and you can also uh, say, well, we only pay if there is no return. So uh, all these kinds of things uh, you can uh, arrange within the affiliate with the affiliate uh, network. Um, that brings me to affiliate networks. Uh, affiliate networks are um, software platforms that uh, are exchanges uh, of uh, first advertising budget from the advertisers probably you in the future, but maybe you're also a publisher. A pub publisher are uh, persons and companies who have a website or an app where they have advertising space available uh, and they're looking for uh, attractive advertising programs. And the affiliate networks first of all, of all brings them together, but also uh, facilitates them with uh, all kinds of measure, me measurement tooling. Uh, the most common measurement tooling is that you place a pixel or the advertiser play, places a pixel on his website or app. So uh, conversions uh, sent through the affiliate network to your website or app uh, can uh, be tracked. Uh, so you can see uh, both parties can see by third, trusted third party, the affiliate network, uh, what happens. Um, publishers in general advertise for uh, one key metric in the end only. And that's uh, revenue per thousand views. So um, they look at your uh, ad uh, advertising program if you're the advertiser and they think, well, do I get enough money? Are there all kinds of strange, um, strange, but for them, uh, 
non-beneficiary uh, clauses like can I uh, advertise in Google Ads? Uh, what is the return period or the, 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 the approved period um, and other things. Um, oh yeah, and uh, when they see your, uh, uh, do you have a good product? Do they think the conversion rate will be high enough to send them uh, valuable traffic? Um, What's the benefit of using an affiliate marketing program for you as an advertiser? It's only, uh, you only pay for value and value is uh, of course a relative thing. Um, you do have a brand effect because if all kinds of uh, banner ads are shown all over the internet, uh, people do see it. Of course, uh, with, uh, when you're promoted in newsletter, that's less the case, um, but in general, there will be a, a brand effect. Uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, disadvantages is uh, you don't have any control over brand control. Of course, you can approve or disapprove affiliates and on where they say they will show you ads, but um, it's not watertight. On the rest, uh, rest on the, an image that I just told you in some words. Um, It's more pointed to the publisher. You recommend the review part of the service on your website or blog. Someone clicks your link and buys something. Conversions are tricked. They get a great product and you get paid. Affiliate networks, um, ShareSale, ClickBank, uh, Amazon, eBay, of course, uh, FlexOffice, PepperJam, Linkshare, Rakuten, a win a trade doubler are two European parties uh, or have at least a big network in the, in the in Europe because of the roots over there. Um, white label, why is this interesting? Uh, just because of the caveat, uh, if you want to start your own affiliate program, why not uh, reward um, your customers uh, for bringing in clients. And um, say if you have two or three clients, they can you can do it in some simple way. But if you get more body or there's a lot of, uh, it's, it's an effective channel for you, then you want to uh, scale it and you need something to manage that scale. Uh, so you get to a wide label affiliate program, which you offer only to your customers or loyal members or your users, whatever. Um, but the technical workings are the same as the, of course you don't pay the much. Right, that's also what, that's something I have to tell by the affiliate networks. What are the margins? Well, it depends per network, um, but it can be, you say something like 60, 50, 50, 60, 40 or 70, 30. Um, and that's also something that you, uh, you have to think strategically about if you use several um, affiliate programs next to each other. So uh, be smart about it because if you have two affiliate networks, one really big one, say with uh, 1 million affiliates and a smaller one with 100,000, but this one with the 100,000 has a different pricing model, say 70 for the uh, publisher, 30 for uh, its network or for himself, for the network. Well, the other is 50-50. And you say, well, I just have say uh, 10 euros per, per acquisition, uh, per user or per sale, whatever. They understand that the publisher goes to the smaller network because he gets that 70% of your 10 euros budget seven euros in this case. Well, here he gets only five euros. Um, but if you do that, this affiliate network will not promote your, uh, promote your really uh, largely uh, to their uh, uh, network. So be smart and strategic about it. This was uh, 
today advocacy. Um, just a final recap, the coming uh, weeks, we're not going to re uh, recap uh, at the beginning all the um, uh, funnel steps, etc., that we uh, that we uh, talked about, because first it's too long, and secondly, um, I have seen your mind now, and uh, well, we've talked about enough, I think about it. Um, and here you see, well, uh, a funnel that works for most companies, organizations. Uh, on the left, you have traffic. You get them on your site or in your app or to the app store, whatever landing platform we're talking about it. They convert and then uh, uh, loyalty and engagement uh, starts. And if they're happy, uh, you try to retain them. And if they're unhappy, you try to win them back uh, one or the other way. And you try to um, expand your brand or expand your brand uh, mentioning uh, what we talked about today. Uh, we say social commerce, sharing, uh, testimonial, reviews, everything to get everything out. Um, so everything from the paid media part forwards uh, is just to optimize your investments that you do in the front and from uh, what we're going to talk about from uh, coming Wednesday on and then from two weeks after it. Um, 